The Auroras of Autumn by Wallace Stevens. This is where the serpent lives, the bodiless. His head is air, beneath his tip at night, eyes open and fix on us in every sky. Or is this another wriggling out of the egg? Another image at the end of the cave, another bodiless for the body slow? This is where the serpent lives, this is his nest, these fields, these hills, these tinted distances, and these pines above and along and beside the sea. This is form gulping after formlessness, skin flashing for wished for disappearances, and the serpent body flashing without the skin. This is the height emerging at its base, the light, these lights may finally attain their pole, in the midmost midnight and find the serpent there, in another nest, the master of the maze of body and air, and forms and images, relentlessly in possession of happiness. This is his poison that we should disbelieve even that. His meditations in the ferns, when he moved so slightly to make sure of sun, made us no less as sure. We saw in his head, black beaded on the rock, the flecked animal, the moving grass, the engine in his blade. Farewell to an idea, the cabin stands deserted on a beach. It is white as by a custom or according to an ancestral theme or as a consequence of an infinite force. The flowers against the wall are white, a little dried, a kind of mark. Reminding, trying to remind of a white that was different. Something else last year or before. Not the white of an aging afternoon, whether fresher or duller, whether of winter cloud or of winter sky from horizon to horizon. The wind is blowing the sand across the floor. Here being visible is being white, is being the, of the solid of white. The accomplishment of an extremist in an exercise. The season changes. The cold wind chills the beach, the long lines of it grow longer and fear the a darkness gathers that it does not fall, and the whiteness grows less vivid on the wall. The man who is walking turns blankly on the sand. He observes how the north is always enlarging to change. With its brilliant, frigid brilliances, its blue-red sweeps, and gusts of gray and kindlings, its fuller green, the color of ice and fire and solitude. Farewell to an idea, the mother's face. The purpose of the room, poem, fills the room. They are together here and it is warm. With none of the prescience of oncoming dreams, it is the evening. The house is evening, half dissolved. Only the half day can never possess remains. Still starred, it is the mother they possess. Figures transparent to their present peace. She makes that gentler which can gentle be. And yet she too is dissolved. She is dissolved, destroyed. She gives transparence, but she has grown old. The necklace is a carving, not a kiss. The soft hands are in motion, not a touch. The house will crumble and the books will burn. They are at ease in a shelter of the mind, and the houses of the mind and they, in time, together, all together. Boreal night will look like the frost as it approaches them. And to the mother as she falls asleep, and as they say good night, good night, upstairs the windows will be lighted, not the rooms. A wind will spread its windy grandeurs round and knock like a rifle butt against the door. The wind will command them with invisible sound. Farewell to an idea. The cancelings, the negations are never final. The father sits in space wherever he sits a brief regard as one that is strong in the wishes of his eyes. He says no to no and yes to yes. He says yes to no and in saying yes he says farewell. He measures the velocities of change. He leaps from heaven to heaven more rapidly than bad angels leap from heaven to hell in flames. But now he sits in quiet and dreamily. 
He assumes the great speeds of space and flutters them from cloud to cloudless, cloudless to clean clear, in flights of eye and ear, the highest eye, and the lowest ear, the deep ear that discerns, at evening things that attended until it hears, the supernatural preludes of its own, at the moment when the angelic eye defines its actors approaching in company in their masks. O oh, master and master seated by the fire, and in, yet in space and motionless and yet, of motion ever bright in origin, profound and yet the king and yet the crown. Look out this present throne, what company and masks can fire it with the naked wind? The mother invites humanity to her house and table. The father fetches tellers of tales and musicians who mute much, muse much on the tales. The father fetches negresses to dance among the children like curious likenesses of pattern in the dancers like me. For these the musicians make insidious tones clawing the sing-song of their instruments. The children laugh and jangle a tiny time. The father fetches pageants out of air, scenes of the theater, vistas, and blocks of wood, and curtains like a naive pretense of sleep. Among these, the musicians strike the instinctive horn. The father fetches unherded herds of barbarous tongue, slobbered and panting paths of breath, obedient to his trumpet's touch. This, then, is Chantillion, or as you please. We stand in the tumult of a festival, what festival? This loud, disordered niche, these hospitaliers, these brute-like guests, these musicians dubbing at a tragedy, a dub, a dub, which is made up of this, that there are no lines to speak, there is no play. Or the persons act one merely by being here. It is a theater floating through the clouds, itself a cloud, although of misted rock and mountains, running like water, wave on wave, through waves of light, it is of cloud transformed to cloud transformed again, idly the way a season changes color to no end except the lavishing of itself and change. As light changes yellow into gold and gold to its vocal elements and fires delight, splashed wise, wide wise, because it likes magnificence and the solemn pleasures of magnificent space. The cloud drifts idly through the half thought of forms. The theater is filled with flying birds, wild wedges as of a volcano's smoke, palm eyed and vanishing, a web in a corridor, or massive portico. A capital, it may be, is emerging or has just collapsed. The denouement has to be postponed. This is nothing until a single man contained. Nothing until this named thing nameless is and is destroyed. He opens the door of his house on flames. The scholar of one candle sees an arctic effulgence flaring on the frame of everything he is, and he feels afraid. Is there an imagination that sits enthroned as grim as it is, it is the benevolent, the just and the unjust, which in the midst of summer stops to imagine winter? When the leaves are dead, does it take its place in the north and unfold itself, goat leaper crystallized and luminous sitting in highest night? In do these heavens adorn and proclaim it, the white creator of black jetty by extinguishings, even of planets as may be, even of earth, even of sight, and snow except as needed by way of majesty in the sky as crown and sun and Kabbalah? It leaps through us, through all our heaven leaps, extinguishing our planets one by one, leaving of where we were and lift of where we knew each other and of each other thought, a shivering residue, chilled and foregone, except for that crown and mystical Kabbalah. But it dare not leave by chance in its own dark. It must change from destiny to slight to priest, and thus its jetted tragedy, its delay, and shape and mournful making Move to find what must have made it and at last the pen, say, a flippant communication under the moon. There may be always a time of innocence. There is never a place, for if there is no time, it, it is not a thing of time nor a place, 
existing in the idea of it alone, in the sense against calamity. It is not less real for the oldest and coldest philosopher. There is or may be a tongue of innocence as pure principle. Its nature is its end, that it should be and yet not be a thing that pinches the pity of the pitiful man, like a book at evening beautiful but untrue, like a book on rising beautiful and true. It is a thing of ether that exists almost as predicate, but it exists, it exists, it is visible, it is, it is. So then these lights are not a spell of light, a sing out of a cloud, but innocence, an innocence of the earth, and no false sign or symbol of malice that we partake thereof. Lie down like children in this holiness, as if awake we lay in the quiet of sleep, as if the innocent mother sang in the dark of the room and on an accordion half heard, created the time and place in which we breathe. And of each other thought in the idiom of the work, in the idiom of an innocent birth, not of the enigma of the guilty dream. We were as Danes in Denmark all day long, and knew each other well, hale-hearted landsmen, for whom the outlandish was another day, of the week clearer than Sunday. We thought of life, and that made brothers of us in a home, in which we fed on being brothers, fed and fattened as on a decorous honeycomb. This drama that we live, we lay sticky with sleep, the sense of the activity of faith is rendezvous. Then, when she came alone, by her coming became a freedom of the two, an isolation which only the two could share. Shall we be found hanging in the trees next spring? Of what disaster is this the eminence? Fair limbs, fair trees, and a wind as sharp as salt. The stars are putting on their glittering belts. They throw around their shoulders cloaks that flash, like a great shadow's last embellishment. It may come tomorrow in the simplest word, almost as part of innocence, almost, almost as the tenderest and truest part. An unhappy people in a happy world, read Rabbi the phrases of this difference. An unhappy people in an unhappy world, here are too many mirrors for misery. A happy people in an unhappy world, it cannot be. There's nothing to roll on the expressive tongue, the finding thing. A happy people in a happy world, Buffo, the ball and opera, a bar. Turn back to where we were when we began, an unhappy people in a happy world. Now solemnize the secret to syllables, read to the congregation for today and for tomorrow this extremity, this contrivance of the sphere, spectre of the spheres, contriving balance to contrive a whole, the vital, never failing genius fulfilling his meditations, great and small. In his unhappy, he meditates a whole, the full of fortune and the full of faith, as if he lived all lives, that he might know, in hall hard in, not hushed for paradise, to a haggling of wind and weather by these lights, like a blaze of summer straw, in winter's nick 